welcome back to the spiders web and as you can see we have these two models in front of us well it's one model that's the rider for that horse now I have been asked by um, Matt Ferrari if I could do a little series on painting the Revenant Cavalry in the same colours that Mantic do them right um, <laughs> I'm going to give it a try. The problem is with the ones that Mantic show is that it doesn't show any great detail. Well, not so much any great detail, but it doesn't show how certain parts of it look. So I'm going to I'm going to be going as close as I can to these because I can't really find one that you know like a close up of one of the models. Um, it's just like the the 10, 10 man 20 man squad so I'm going to do my best as I can these are this is not the Revenant's um, cavalry uh, chap it's the limited edition army standard bearer um, I got this in that uh, big box set the mis you know the lucky bag thing that I bought uh, just before Christmas um, so I'm going to use this. It's not, as I said, it's not a revenant, but it will show you how it's done, all being well, at least. I'm hoping I can work out how it's done from just looking at the pictures. Okay, so first off, I'm going to be using some white scar. Now, this is going to be going over the areas which are bone on both the horse and the rider. Um, but before we start I just want to point out that I have primed this model in grey and then I'll give it a blast straight from above with a white spray. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of highlighting um, showing as well with this. So we'll start off with the horse first of all and we will add this white to all the areas that are this bone. Um, I am not going to be fast forwarding any part of this. I'm going to be keeping it um, to its entirety or at least I'm not planning on fast forwarding anything of this because it's been a a request that I've been asked you know it's been a request that somebody's made so I'm going to make sure that I try to do this in as much detail as I can but saying that depending on how long it takes me to do certain things I may have to speed a few things up um, so I can't promise anything but I, I do not have the intention of uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, oops, there's my computer finishing something. Um, I do not have the intention of um, muting anything and putting anything on high speed for this because I'd, I'd like Matt to see exactly what I'm doing and the reason and uh, tell the reason why. Okay, so as so we're using white on the bone areas. Um, as you know, if you've seen mine, I use um, Screaming Skull, wash with Ad Adrax Earthshade, and then um, go over again with a mix of Screaming Skull and White in some areas. Um, you can actually, I have got Ushabti Bone now, so I may st I'll probably start using that for the um, some of the bone areas as well um, oh. dee 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 dee. Well, what I've also done I've cleaned all the um, the model up um, meaning I've taken, taken it off the sprue well it wasn't on a sprue uh, oops. I've trimmed all the um, mould lines um, I've um, what else have I done? There's a little bit of flashing here and there, not all that much. I've 
cleared that away um, tidied the model up with a, a sharp knife basically and then I've put it in water a little bit of um, dishwashing liquid in there uh, washing up liquid rather and give it a bit of a, a rub down with a an old toothbrush or a, a very cheap new tooth, toothbrush we can go and get uh, out of discount shops um, like 20 odd toothbrushes for a pound or something like that yeah it's not that but you know what I mean just don't spend a fortune on toothbrushes rather wait until you're replacing yours or you, the one that you're using or buy some really cheap toothbrushes and then just go over gently with it um, making sure that you don't um, press too hard and then I've dry fitted it together now when I've dry fitted this I've found that it was one side of it was actually warped so, so um, boil the kettle put the kettle in a cup and then just dipped it in for a couple of seconds uh, pressed it together until it was um, fitting okay held it for a while just to make sure that it stayed straight and then glued it together and I found that there was a gap here so I used some green stuff to fill that gap in and uh, I went across this lip, I really should have there's a bit of a lip there but never mind um, I should have cleared that up, I forgot about that before I started uh, spraying never, but as I said never mind um, that's what I've done to get it together and I've glued it I so primed it with grey primer, sprayed over the top with a little bit of white and now it's the paint job so as I said every word on this is going to get a coating of or on the bone areas is going to get the base coating of white um, I am not really looking forward to doing the flag to be brutally honest with you um, because my free handing technique with paints on, on uh, detail leaves a vast amount to be desired so I'm, I'm trying my best though um, I'm not brilliant at free handing this kind of thing especially when you've got some as much detail in this in the model as you have with this um, flag but I'll do my best Speaking of um, the Reaver, sorry, the Revenant's cavalry, um, I was really surprised last week when I found out that in one of the emails that, or the email newsletters that uh, Mantic um, send out, that uh, my Revenant's cavalry painting series was um, featured in the um, in the email um, I was chuffed to bits with that um, so I'd like to say thank you Mantic for including me and recognising what I've done and the compliments that you've paid in uh, recommending my work I wasn't expecting anything like that to happen but uh, they must have thought it was good enough to feature and I am chuffed to bits as I say so give a mantic thinks my paint my, what I do with the painting is possible <laughs> as I say really really chuffed to bits when I saw that um, in fact I didn't actually see that I was told about it and then uh, my supplier at the games club Merck from Grim Tree Games online game store and blog uh, sent me a private message on Facebook told me about it and then forwarded, me, forwarded the uh, email to me for some reason I must have missed the email accidentally deleted it or whatever I don't know what I've done but at least I got to see what uh, what they did and a few people have come up to me since and mentioned it at the game, games club and Asked whether I knew anything about it beforehand, and uh, you say no, I haven't. 
Right, what I'm doing now is I am mixing some um, Evil Sun Scarlet to some of the White Scar. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to do some of the um, sinew and muscles and that for the horse. So I want a very pale pink and I'm going to go over all the areas of muscle and sinew there is here um, all the soft tissue areas um, exactly the same way as I did on my video um, at least I think that's how they do it I, I real, as I say I can't, can't really tell it's one of the areas that I'm struggling with trying to find how they've done it but it looks as though this is what they've done um, but it's a little bit darker on those as far as I've noticed but I will be doing a wash with um, the uh, Oops, I've caught. I've caught some of the bone with this pink, but never mind. It's I can always sort that out a little bit later. That is not a big issue at the moment. Um, yeah, so we can try and get the at least the base coating done in this video and possibly the initial wash and then in the next video when we come to it we can uh, do the highlighting on some areas but I just hope I do this model justice um, I think this could be one of the ones that gets painted and then stripped down a little later mind you saying that you can actually get these if you've got 10 is it 10 or 15 mantic points you can get this fit uh, you can get this model from mantic so I may actually I think it's 10 mantic points I may just do this and keep it as this color scheme um, and then send off another one Um, I need a little more of this, it's, it's dried up quite quickly on my wet palette, somehow. In fact, I'm just going to mix some of the red in with the, the white that's already on the a little bit lighter just keep that looks about right um, if it isn't then yeah it looks about right um, oops my phone's just playing uh, a little tune Sure, what's happening there? I thought I'd. Uh, switch the volume off. But there again, saying that I switched it back on again because I took Laddie out for a walk earlier. I was waiting for a phone call, so I, uh, I think I put it back on. That's uh, I thought that might be a notification from Facebook or some such somebody sent oh, somebody sent me a message it's certainly not my ringtone or my uh, watch me call it for me text messages right so so just keep it quite pale over this we are going to be going over with a um, Carolberg Crimson Wash momentarily and I think I may as well uh, also have 
retired my Citadel brushes and I saw the Army Painter brush set, set, brush set online on eBay the other day and thought go on so I'll put it again on that so I bought that so I will give that a try when it turns up so what I need to do now is just clear that um, I'm just going to wash the wet palette off where the, some of the pink was and then put some more white down Then. And when you're doing any model, any painting or anything, you always seem to put, you always seem to want a lot of white, a lot more white than anything else because that's the one that gives you the highlights colours. Um, and I'm saying that I don't tend to use white for making uh, colours brighter. I always seem to use um, the. Um, Screaming Skull. I think white alters the colour of the highlight too much. It turns red to pink and that kind of thing. Let me see a There is a her though and it's doing my nutting. Let's see if we can get it off. I think I've got it. Okay, so I'll put that away and get back to the paintbrush. Oops. I'm actually using my head loop for this. Um, I don't know how I've managed to. I don't know how I've managed to paint models for so long without one of these. I look a bit of a nana wearing it, Mike, but I don't care how I look as long as I can see. I'm just going to get a little bit more of the pink and go around here because I've missed a couple of areas that should have been done. There we are. Now then, first I think I'm going to mix a bit more of that so I'll get some more whites. Spot of red. And really, when you're mixing, you should always put red in first rather than mixing the red into it because um, you tend to then use a lot. Because red is a lot more powerful colour. If you do the red first and then mix your white or whatever whatever colour you're mixing into it second, then you can act you don't use as much of the the mixed in colour as you would if you did the um maybe put too much red in and the second or if you put too much, I me mixing this pink now. If I mix the red into the white, okay, um, I'd use a lot more white trying to get the shade back to how it should be than um, I would if I'd have mixed the white into the red. Quick tip for you though. 
I'm using red. Mix the colour into the red, not the red into the colour. If you get me drift. There we go. I'm doing one thing and going over it with another colour. Then right, I'm not fussed about this. It's going to be black, so I'm looking at the that one. It was a very shiny black as well, so that might give me an excuse to use my um, what's it called? Uh, oh dear, bird coat. And a bit more white, just to cover up the areas that I've just messed up. Do fine. Alrighty then. Next, we want a bit of black. And when I say a bit of black, I mean quite a bit of black. <laughs> Just need to find it first. There we go. And so we're in quite a bit of black onto this model. So we'll get it all done first of all. So we need black and then white. So what I'm trying to do here is like a mid grey colour. And that is going to be the flesh colour for the horse. At least that's how it looks anyway. Um, and the flesh colour is where you can see flat pieces of flesh or flat pieces on the body of the horse so we're talking um, all along the underneath of the horse um, so this is this is how it looks on the picture anyway. Um, there's also this bit here. trying to do is be as neat as we can with it uh, try not to go over too much of the pink um, I think that is almost it there's not much to do on it Sure whether I should have done that earlier or not, but ah uh, well, it's done. Like I said, not going over too much of the pink, I've just splattered it all over pink on the back leg. Oh. It just means I go over it a little bit more with the pink. This is not a problem. Anyway, I decide I don't want it to be. I just paint over again. So I'm not sure about this area, so I'm removing. from it. Okay so that's tidied that bit up. Next what we're going to be doing is the armour. 
and for the armour I'm going to be using straight black and there we go so all this bit all this kind of stuff is going to be black we will be going over the edges of this later on um, I'm not exactly sure whether it's a metal colour or a non-metallic colour but I have chosen to do it in a non-metallic colour which is going to be a very pale grey so as I said I can't tell specifically what it is because the photographs although they show the models well they don't seem to show the, the level of clarity for um, the paintwork so I'm just there are areas of this I will be making up as I go along um, but I'm going to try it's going to look as close as I can get it to the the proper mantic look when I say the proper mantic the way mantic uh, mantic themselves paint their models up um, it's not the way I normally work as you know because I don't agree with um, painting them exactly the same way as you'd see them in the advertising bump but there again saying that this is a special request so I don't often do those so in fact I think this is the first time I've been asked to do something like this paint something a certain way so it was asked nicely how could I say no Please, somebody tell me, how could he have said no? <laughs> no, seriously though, it's... Um, it's nice that somebody asks, you know, people ask me to do things that I don't wouldn't normally do. And it's just lucky that I had... Um, this model otherwise I couldn't have done it to be honest because I've done all my uh, Revenant Cavalry and my Revenant Cavalry I do to my own colour scheme for my own army rather than um, rather than being able to play about with things because when I'm doing these videos I'm doing them showing you how I'm painting my army I don't do commissions as you know not that anybody's actually asked me to do a commission but I suppose if depending on what it was oh somebody, somebody's outside okay laddie okay calm down calm down somebody outside somebody outside calm down good boy I'm not too worried about getting the edges of this armor done because it's going to be going over with a null oil wash, which is black. So that will take some of the that will take a lot of the brightness away. If I need to, I can go again with a finer brush and touch up the edges. But I'm just going to wait and see how it looks first before I I take that step. Um, there we are so most of it is done now it's just this little bit here that needs doing I need to have a look at more 
floaters again to remind me exactly how um, the horses look but for the time being this will suffice because the next step is um, washes and the black as you can understand probably isn't going to get a wash because there's no point in washing something that is already as dark as it can be um, I'm going to go over the chains as well with the black and thinking about it now I would imagine that the bits that I said I couldn't work out whether it was metallic paint or normal paint I would imagine it would be metallic paint so I think I've just changed my mind as to how I'm going to do certain things but that's how things happen you start painting models sometimes with a set idea in mind and then you think no I can do it a different way which could be better and you change your mind and do it another way always oh good always when you're doing things like this keep your mind and your options open to change because sometimes you will find something that will seriously um, pop into your head and you think now why the earth was I going to do it the other way I mean obviously it could have been a case of they've done like a non-metallic metal effect but I'm not very good with non-metallic metal I have tried it once or twice I just can't seem to get to grips with it I know it takes a little bit of practice but if something's metal I like it to be metal so I do it in metal, I use a metal paint, metallic paint to do it <laughs> Okay, so there's Horsey done. And now it's just a case of washes. So wash number one is going to be Parabur Crimson all over the pink areas. So all I have to do is oops, I want that one anyway. Drew to Val, I don't need that. Carolbird Crimson. I think I've just bent the banner there. I'm just going to move that out of the way then I don't break it anymore. Alright then. So it's Carol Burr Crimson going all over the pink areas of the horse, which will darken it up tremendously. And we're going near the black area so don't be too worried if you get any on the black. As I say, you're not going to see it. I still haven't worked out yet, even though I've only been using even though I've been using my uh, head loop. Um, for, when, for the last few weeks when I've been doing my um, zombie side figures uh, I still haven't worked out how, how I can use it while I'm doing this to get into my washes first time <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to dip my brush into it and there we are. 
I'm, I'm going to keep this quite dark because it looks quite dark on the advertising pictures. Um, I'm not going to do any more in the line of um, not much in the line of highlighting on these. Um, as I said, they, they, they look dark, so I'm going to keep them dark. So these, I'm just going to darken them up quite a bit now, and then just come over and just do little touches here and there of highlighting. But not a great deal. Next. We're going to be using Nuln Oil. And the Nuln Oil. Give it a shake first of all. Um, here's the thing. Some of these paints when you first use them. You may think it gives like a nice. like gives a, a shiny oily effect. If you don't shake them up it will do. So if, if you find that it's giving you an oily look to the. To your model. Shake it. And that oily effect will go away. And now the bone here. I will be coming back to highlight this now the bone areas later on. So it's not going to stay as dark as the um, what do we call it? It's going to be the uh, or the sinew in the flesh and whatsoever. And yes, I am avoiding the base at the moment. So I'm not fussed about the base. I'm just showing how to do the. Um, actual figure itself. Uh, I'll, I'll touch on the base um, when the miniature's finished. There we are. And almost finished. All you have to do is, oops, missed a bit there with the black. I'll have to come back again. And I've said before, I'll say it again, I always tend to do a model and then realise I've missed somewhere that I thought I'd done after I've gone on to doing something else. <laughs> I will always find I do that. There we are. So that's the, that's the horse painted and washed. I'm just going to get the black again and just give it a bit of a touch up on the ear. Second, I'm just going to take it straight from the pot rather than get into the uh, what should we call it again? The um, wet palette. Just washing it so that will dilute it a little bit. There we are. So there's our horse done. I will now call this video the moment because I, I need to go out so when I come back I'll concentrate on the rider in the next video and in fact I won't concentrate on the rider I'll get the horse done first and then I'll do the rider okay so until next time as always take care god bless and bye for now <laughs>